Welcome back friends, this is Solomon Jagwe, I'm back with another quick insight and today guys we're going to be, going to be talking about simulant. So you, many of you have asked what is simulant? <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to paint a picture to, uh, for you uh, what simulant is, what it is it's capable of doing right now and possibly what it's going to be able to do in the future. What you're looking at right now is a scene rendered in Simulan, right? So Simulan is an app, it's an iOS app that you use to capture an environment, right? And then capture the lighting of that environment so that you can use it to then light a, a digital asset that you've uploaded yourself or using the ones that are already in the app itself. And so we are in the beta testing period right now. So ch chances are some of the features might get better, improve some may be dropped off as they get uh, feedback from the testers. And I'm gonna walk you through. So this is what you see on the screen is the interface of the app once you sign up on uh, for the beta and then you're able to log into it and then you're able to create a new scene. These are the steps that we're gonna be going through, right? So let me switch over to this side real quick. So what you see here is uh, the scene that I've been showing you inside of Blender. So Simulant works hand in hand with Blender, and I'm hoping they'll be able to make it work together with other you know, 3D applications. But right now, if I play back, you can see the occlusion that's happening and how the camera is uh, it's just like in a game uh, like engine where it's only showing the content that is visible from the point of view of the camera so that it's management optimized but without this even without looking through this camera you can still see the environment so let me uh, switch to the camera itself so there you can actually see the environment and behind it is the 360 degree HDRI image that was captured that is casting light. But then you also have the uh, LiDAR scan of the back of, the, of my backyard here. Like if you you know recall whichever place that you are, if it, you're able to do two things. One, you're able to scan and, and capture the light environment of the set that you're in. And then you're also able to capture the 3D, 3D geometry of the environment so that you can actually cast shadows on that environment so wherever the character is and uh, it, it has it comes it's really well uh, like integrated inside of blender so over here you can see there's a tab for Simulan and also a tab for Simulan advanced under Simulan over I mean the Simulan tab over here you're able to load scenes that have been that Simulan has uh, captured and you, once you have an account, these are the scenes that you'll be able to check out. And so every time that you create a new scene, you're able to then to do multiple texts in it, right? And then you're able to download the scene once it's ready. So here we have, we'll go back one level up. So you can see there's this scene right here and you can open that scene. If it's not downloaded yet, you, they'll have like a download icon right here and then each take, there will be multiple takes of the, you know, the environment, just like you see in. Let me see, let me bring this up. So there is load take one, two, and there's load take one. So if I load take two, it's gonna load a different take inside of a, a Blender. So let me go ahead and uh, go to my scenes again over here. Let's go to nature, and let's open the scene. And it's, it works best with Blender 4.1. And hopefully as a recording of this video, it's 4.1. But in the future, you'll be able to use uh, hopefully newer versions of Blender. So this version of Blender, uh, it has the plugin. Like once you load the environment, you're gonna see the plugin. So here you can see the environment itself. You can see the LiDAR scan, right? Of how the whole backyard looks. So the beautiful thing is this one offers you occlusion. So if I play back the scene, you can actually see the character right there walking and you can see how it's grounded. That's how you're able to get shadows in the, in the, the renders, which are rendered on in the cloud using Simulan. But you can also render in Blender. You can, after you've brought the scene in here, you can render inside of Blender. So if we, we switch over to like the display over here, you can see the it cycles right now and you can go back to this one as well and display the scan data right there. 
but we can also go back here. And so in order to actually see it, the whole result, right, including the, the background, the backdrop, you need to go to the tab of Simulon over here, make sure you're connected, and then click Sync Scene, right? So it's syncing the scene with the Simulant application, right? And once it's done syncing, you'll be able to fetch the text that are in that scene, right? So in here, in this particular scene, it's uh it's in the backyard where I was I was able to capture my backyard because I wanted to do like a, a couple of scenes that have nature in them, and then it's now I can click on fetch the download text and there you have it. So take two if I load take two, it's gonna load the animation that comes with that and the camera that is in it. So if I switch to the camera here, now you can see the animation. And there's the character. So this particular take, I wanted to record it so that it was wider and because I was preparing this for YouTube. But if you want to do like a short, then you can do that. You can also do the portrait mode and that'll be a different take to it. So right now it's, uh, if I switch over to the render engine, it cycles, but if I switch to EV and then I press uh, this display over here, the viewport shading, I can then play it back so you can actually see how it's tracking, you know? That's what's really amazing, that you're able to get like lighter scanning of the environment and you're able to track it properly. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, kick out of this camera and probably sync. I want to make sure I, this is, uh, yeah, let's fetch and load take one okay so now that we have uh, cycles enabled you can actually see the final render the high resolution render that's taking place over here and it looks really beautiful <laughs> so that's why it's really awesome to for that this is working together with blender but you can also switch from blender to simulant and ev as well so if i switch to ev then you're able to play it back in real time and then it will be able to, to match the backdrop as well. So if I switch to the camera over here and I play back, you can actually see it over there matching the background. So that is the, the result. And over here, once you've like rendered the scene in Simulan, it's going to look like this video right here. So this is the final video that you're gonna be able to see and it looks beautiful. It has, um, I don't know what kind of render settings there are <laughs> on Simulan, but it looks like it's uh, path traced, just like you saw the, the comparison between uh, EV and Cycles, but this looks path traced because you can see the reflections, you can see the, the ambient occlusion and it works really well. It works really well with the backdrop and be able to capture the lighting environment around it, okay? And so I'm gonna show you another quick video here. Uh, this one walks you through the steps of actually how this is done. Let me switch over to this side. So the first step is you capture the scene, that's step one, and you tap on the scene up at the top in your app and give it a name. Just type in any name that you want for this. And then in step two, you select the environment and lighting conditions. So it can be indoors or outdoors. And then you select the type of lighting. If it's indirect sunlight, all those things matter because then it will be able to do a really optimized setting. And then you scan it. So like a 360 degree environment and it will guide you. It has like a, a scanning app like feature that you're able to capture all the way around 360 degrees, and then that becomes the lighting source. But the lighting source is not enough without the LiDAR scan. So this is the LiDAR scan that then captures the actual 3D geometry. And then on step four, you're able to add the assets, right? So they come up with a whole manner of different assets, right? And they are categorized according to if they have animation or not, if it's just for still, and you can upload your own as well. So they have noticed that they are const constantly adding new like characters and environments and props. And so this is really, really good. Then step five, you're able to switch to capture and shoot. And this is almost like being a director. 
it's not yet rendered but you can choose between a photo and a video when you choose video the result is what you are able to see you're able to literally uh, you are recording almost like a, a director of photography or a director yourself and then when it's rendered on the cloud it looks like that it's able to take the lighting environment and you're able to use it to light your scene right and so that's that's the beauty of uh similar and i just wanted to give you like a a quick overview where if you do get into the beta testing program there is a link in the description of this video so you can sign up as well and check it out but uh, it's really cool that we're able to do this kind of uh, uh cinematography essentially in virtual <laughs> in that it works together with blender and you can render in blender you can even add additional things inside of here and then send it back you can export the components and then when you go back to simulan over here you'll be able to download the different like if you update the scene you'll be able to open the scene here and then re-render on the app this is the desktop version but once you update this then the app itself is updated with your scene as well and then under the assets so you're able to upload your own so just click on new asset over here give it a name just uh, browse to it so one thing that i've done this particular character set off in character creator and i imported this model and converted it into like a, a an animatable character inside of a cc4 i was able to you know map the bones and then added motion capture and then i went to file uh, let me pause here so you can see i'm going i went i selected the character i went to file export and then export as an fpx as a clothed character in the settings i used blender and i embedded the textures i made sure to change this to like 30 frames per second and animation i went to custom and then i was able to browse to what any like any animation that comes with character creator 4 and iclone and for example this one is look around cautious that's the one i was able to use and then like i'm gonna open that so you can actually see what it looks like so you're able to add multiple animations in here and you can also uh, send as you can there's some settings in here that you can choose to add but at the bottom you can also export mesh and motion individually motion individually but i chose to just add this as a list and then when some done um, i was able to click export and then in blender i was able to open the character inside of blender in a blender scene import as an fbx file and then export as .glb that's one thing make sure you export as .glb because then when you go to over here to let's cancel this so these are the settings so once you export as a .glb you will be able to have a character with animation on it you can browse and pick it up and then you can also create a, a screenshot do a screen grab of the character and then you're able to do like a thumbnail give the description and you can choose to publish it or not if you want to keep it private don't click publish because then it will be available to everybody else and then once you're done just uh, create the asset and so you can see some of the ones that i've done so one of the ones that i'm really looking forward to doing is the jaeger <laughs> do you know that a jaeger is over 260 feet tall so I want to see how that is going to look in augmented reality, like even when I take it out on a field and try to scale it up and then do a capture of that. That's going to be fun. All right. And then uh, among other assets, you have some that are animated, some that are not. And when you are scrolling down, it will actually have like an icon over it. If something is animated, it will show that there's animation on it. And you're even able to add some that have audio, right? So if there will be an audio button and also like a, an animation button to it. So that is uh, the gist of uh, the desktop version. And this is, makes it possible for you then to create things like this and also to do like a final render that looks something like this. Yeah. So isn't that amazing, guys? So you've you've someone has uh, had asked, you know, is this like Wonder Studio? I, and I'm saying it's different because you're not capturing motion capture here to apply to a character on the body of the character and the face. No, this one is set getting a live environment out there, scanning it, capturing the lighting environment, and then 
once you do the lidar scanning you can actually come back at a new in another time of day and recapture the lighting and still use the lidar scanning data so that it casts light on that environment that is what's really cool and that i have not been able to do in a wonder studio so this is great because you're able to bring in your own characters physically adjust them in blender add more components adjust the textures and then re-render because with this is a <laughs> if, if you have like a, a script that you've written and you have like multiple characters that are, are going to be participating in your you know short film then you're able to do like multiple takes of this and then you're able to actually combine some of these elements inside of blender and be able to re-render this and then create like multiple shots that then you can make a short film out of right so today again i was sharing with you what simulan is and what you're able to do with it and hopefully in the future you know it will be expanded to have that these characters interact with you because that will be so awesome <laughs> we're gonna continue to share feedback with the team so that they can actually tell i mean improve on this product and as i continue to use this i'm gonna do my best to I share with you guys i will share shorts i'll share like short films so that you guys prepare yourselves so that once it comes out into the public then you're able to play with it and have a, a leg up essentially <laughs> but this is awesome you know this character is from unity i think you guys are familiar with him but the fact that i was able to take him from character creator over here add animation to him right and the cool thing about character creator is that you know one of the things that uh really really like put or like for me it put it's like an off putting is when i see like feet are sliding right so the cool thing is inside of character creator and even in iclone you can edit this character so that they have fit contact right and that makes it possible to like if the character is going up and down you can actually see the foot contact like that so you could essentially edit the mock up so if we do that and play back, you can see how like he's crouching around like that. And that gives the character more contact. I mean, like it grounds the character more. And that's why I recommend using I, uh, Character Creator and Iclone together with, uh, uh, with Blender and Simulan. So anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm hoping that you guys get a chance to play with uh, Similan and create amazing, amazing uh, short films that combine like live action footage together with uh, CG characters in an environment and you're able to include other like live actors. So you could actually, I, if I'd had someone with me here, would have been able to put someone next to this character and they almost like interact. And if there was a dialogue, the character is talking, then I'll be able to make them like have dialogue together so thank you again for if if you're new to my channel do please spare a minute to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're alerted when i post a new video and uh, i'm one so grateful to every single person that is a patron and those who have supported me in the past and currently thank you guys thank you for helping me to get to 275,000 subscribers i truly truly appreciate you guys please stay blessed never give up on your dream may we continue to use these tools to tell our stories and i'm always always praying for you bye for now